Hi, today I want to show you how to update your GDS Lab installation. Um, version 2.5 and above has some advantages over the previous installations um, which I'd like to show you also. If we go to the GDS Instruments homepage, which is www.gdsinstruments.com, go to the Technical Support section and click on the Online Support Center. On here we have a download section where we can select GDS Lab. And if I click to download the latest version of GDS Lab, and today I'm going to choose to save it. Um, that should save it in the download section of my, um, uh, my Windows system. OK, the download is now complete. I slightly cheated there by pausing the video. We didn't want to watch uh, the little bar going across the screen all day for another two minutes. So if I go to the download section of Windows, we'll see GDS Lab Setup version 2.5. Um, if I double click on this and select Run, we don't have to do any extraction. It will automatically do the full install now. If I choose Next, here it says this will install GDS Lab version 2.5.0 on your computer. It's recommended that you close all other applications before continuing. As I have nothing else open except Windows Explorer, let's close that down just to be sure. Um, then we can continue by hitting Next. It selects the GDS Lab directory, say Next, and the software will be called GDS Lab. Um, there we have install. Now we have three options here. One to install USB drivers. This is required for all the USB devices that uh, uh, the, the GDS provide. For example, the new version 2 standard controller, the enterprise level controller, maybe the uh, enterprise level dynamic system. They all run on a USB device, therefore need the USB drivers. Install the GDS dongle drivers is uh, a sensible thing to do. Sample hardware INI files will install all of the INI files from the installation and put them in a separate file for, for easy access. We'll, we'll do that anyway. Now, I have version uh, a 2.5 version on this computer already, so I can select to uninstall it automatically. Now, the automatic uninstall is something that the previous versions of the installers did not do. Um, in fact, if you are installing any version prior to 2.5, uh, you will need to do the, the, the standard Windows uninstall before you use 2.5 installer. But now we are moving forwards with 2.5. Once we go to 2.5.1, 2.5.2, 2.6, etc., you, you can just run the installation file and all the old files will be removed accordingly. I have chosen to install, um, or sorry, it automatically installs the .NET framework, so it requires the latest version of .NET, um, or at least version 3.5 and above. Um, it automatically installs it from the installer, which is part of the reason why the installer is so large at uh, something like 90 megs. If we click Finish, the setup should be complete. Now, let's just check that it runs. GDS Lab. Good, and you will see it already started up with an, an initialization file for an odometer cell. Um, that's because there was already an INI file on this computer. Um, so when we did the, the reinstall, one important thing it didn't do was delete any existing INI files. Now, it will be important to show you on this machine that within the GDS Lab directory, we have the calibration files directory as normal, which houses calibration files for your initialization file. Now when it does the uninstall, 
with versions 2.5 and above. It does not delete, remove or modify any of the files within this directory. What it does is it puts calibration files within this sample calibration files directory so that they can be copied over if your standard any file has um, any of these any files that it's expecting they can be copied over to this calibration files um, directory as so. So, where, so just to reiterate when you do a reinstall with version 2.5 and above it will put these sample calibration files in place it will not touch your existing calibration files. Now another area of interest is this plugins directory. This is where all of the DLLs exist for all of the drivers, for the various components, the various devices that you might attach to the machine. So if you were updating individual files, you would put the DLL file in this plugins directory. If you remember in version 2.3.6 and, and prior to this version, um, all of these plugins would be kept in the Windows System 32 directory. Now Windows 7 and above encourages you not to keep things in the Windows 32 directory. Um, and um, that's about it. Um, oh, do I want to change the color scheme? No, I like the color scheme as it is. Okay, well I hope the uh, version 2.5 installer works well for you, but if not, um, just contact us at support at gdsinstruments.com or go onto the website, go to the technical support uh, section where you can log a ticket. Okay, good luck. I have just started the recording again because there's one thing I've realized is important in the new version 2.5 that I haven't told you. Um, uh, test modules are all installed by default um, whereas previously in versions 2.5 prior to version 2.5 sorry um, you would have to install the test modules individually they are all installed into the plugins directory um, for example if you're familiar with the files, it's normally the one starting TT, perhaps, for triaxial test. So there's the UNSAT module, uh, permeability module. They are all installed by default, and only those ones enabled on your HASP dongle are the ones that are actually displayed in your drop-down list. So that makes, it, makes the installation significantly easier, because it is a one-size-fits-all, um, and off you go. Okay, thank you.